Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes video replay review number 38 here. Now, if you recall, last week we had a very crazy game between Kodachrome and Crusher of All. Well, this week we decided to get a follow-up game because these guys were just so... out... crazy. Okay, just, they're crazy. So we got a follow-up game between these guys. This time it's on Samoa, Kodachrome again on the Allies, and Crusher of All on the Axis. And we do have another, a, 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 a double threat here for you. Not only do we have a crazy new first for Tales of Heroes, it's the same two guys in a row. We've also got uh, Aniketos here with us, as well as, of course, my great co-host Vittensby. So uh, welcome Vittensby and welcome Aniketos. It's great to be here. I just wanted to uh, ask Annie, uh, you know, we kind of missed this in the interview, but what was it like to play for, for the show? You know, what do you think is going through these guys' uh, heads um, before they, they play these matches? Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about your personal experience with that, uh, and then we'll just get right into the to the replay. Um, I basically think that they're thinking at, at the moment, shit, I must not make a noob mistake. I must not make a noob mistake. And actually, they're trying to do some crazy-ass things, uh, probably, so that people will have a good show. That's yep, cool. My... Do you think the pressure's on, or is it just Yeah, definitely, kind of... definitely. Okay. They, they especially will try to um, do all their best not to make a really stupid mistake, because like a lot of people will see this. That's what I'm trying to say, actually. Okay. okay. All right, Bridger. Do oh. the countdown. All right. Whoa, I found inside the church. I can see. I can see clearly now. The roof is gone. Oh, wait. No, okay. There we go. All right. So we are at the five-second mark. Kodachrome versus Crusher of All. Take two, starting in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. So we've got a barracks opening over here at the beginning for Kodachrome. Good luck. Have fun being exchanged. So let's see what these guys are going to do again. Samoa, typical choke point map for Company of Heroes. Very, very popular in the beta as the main map that people played. The other one that we had back then was what? St. Hilaire as a 1v1 map? God, that was horrible. So you've got the three victory points. Point is to try and hold those for as long as possible. Uh, I think on this map, the center is one of the very most important points in the entire game because from the center area, you can control, you can project power in the directions that you want it, be it the high munitions points that you have there, um, the strategic points to cut off your opponent. It's just such a vital area for you to have that the person who controls the center ultimately is usually the person that's winning. Yeah, we have a more traditional start this game from both players. I know that uh, I believe it was Crusher Vol did a one, uh, the one pioneer start, uh, two yeah. quick two Volks. Uh, Annie, what's your take on that whole strategy? I know you were experimenting with it a little bit and had your own thoughts about it when it first came out. Um, yeah, I actually tried that, and I noticed that I really missed the pioneer capping power because most of the time I was very, really busy with the rifleman and. I noticed uh, after some time that my opponent actually has like most of the map and I didn't have anything so I kind of switched back to the normal uh, normal build order after that. And you've also been a fan of uh, quick jeep I know especially on Ingeville. Uh, what do you think about this quick jeep uh, on Samoa? Um, I don't think you quite favor it as much but uh, what's just your general thoughts on the... Wow. Uh, I just lost the Pioneer Squad. Uh, what's your thoughts on the Jeep opening on Samoa? Uh, it actually... What, well, what the hell? Or now a two Jeep it? opening, rather. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is kind of weird. Yeah, but uh, one Jeep is actually pretty good because you can actually see the MGs uh, from a uh, much um, longer distance. So your riflemen don't actually get suppressed. That's definitely that's useful. Good. That's that, that's yeah. not something I considered before getting a jeep first. I always used it for harassment really early, but that's also a very good point. Uh, you can see the machine gun, so you, before just walking in and getting suppressed and going, ah, oh, okay, retreat. You know, that that's definitely very interesting. I can't believe that pioneer got killed though. I mean, it had a good chunk of health left when he hit the retreat button, and the jeep was yeah, able to completely chase it down. 
Yeah, but that's what, that's because the jeep was like really close. If it's like really close, it does a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was able to stay right on its tail, and that that was definitely contributed to that. So we've got a machine gun setting up here. Is it going to be? Yeah, it's setting up in a good choke point. They're not going to be able to flank that. So what do you think about this two jeep start with, uh, besides being a surprise type uh, element to it, uh, you obviously have jack squat for capping power. Uh, do you think on a map like Samoa that the harassment is, is working for him and do you think it's semi-viable? Mm, no, because you get like one MG in the right position and uh, they're basically useless. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think it's really viable because... Oh, wow. Wow. Those Volks just got chewed up by the rifles. Were they on the wrong side of that wall? Were they not in the cover? I, I just... It looked like they didn't have any cover at all when the when I zoomed in over there. Did you guys catch that at all? Yeah. No, I, I just saw them running away, actually. They got pretty hardcore owned, but the riflemen did lose about half their half their life. They were just lucky that none of the men died. Uh, we now have them going in the church, which uh, definitely I think was pretty much a mistake. Uh, a little bit of repair action going on uh, on the side. Uh, I think the only re reason why this strategy is working up until this point was just because he lost his first uh, pioneer. Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, that's just my take on it. But uh, who knows? I could see this working maybe a little bit better on on a different map, um, maybe like Bow Lowlands, but uh, if you give up the center in some wall, you're, you're really running the uh, the risk of it. <clears throat> getting so locked in your base. Yeah. Yeah, you'll probably see the weakness of the strategy right now, because when he gets the MG in the building, and he can actually support it, uh, I mean, the jeeps will be like really useless, basically. Yep, couldn't agree but more. I mean, they can't flank the building at all, and you really miss those uh, like two extra riflemen squads. Yeah. Look, jeeps are significantly more expensive than bikes. I mean, bikes are 180, jeeps are 220, so 40 manpower is a big difference early in the game, when you could really use that extra, you know, that extra squad but, that much faster. Yeah. Well, you know, if he does go uh, quick uh, raid, that could be a interesting way to make it work. Um, I was talking to Kodachrome. In Relic Online last night, I thank for playing for the the show, and uh, he had mentioned that uh, that I, he played under the name Proletarian, and a Proletarian, I forget one or the other, and that he likes doing wacky strategies as well. And uh, he noticed one of my comments I made in his thread that uh, that I really enjoyed watching his wacky strategies. Most of the stuff is something that uh, that I, I think just adds a lot of fun into the into COH, uh, and that's kind of why I like doing wacky strategies. So I'm not saying we're two peas in a pod, but uh, he's my kind of guy. And now you can see these jeeps at long range doing almost no damage to that guy in the building. That's why I think he's moved forward. Uh oh, has he noticed? He sees the machine gun setting up. Oh no! I guess it's not setting up. It was just trying to run and cross and get into that building, perhaps. But he had already moved up his jeeps, and as a result. Uh, that maneuver did not work at all, but that was a good place to put it, in that building right there. It's really going to force him to get the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, a quick flamer engineer on, on that, uh, on the NG squad would have been, a quick flamer on the NG squad I think would have helped him out a little bit, but the looming threat of the uh, double MG, you know, some WAP in is just, it, it's going to be hard to overcome that with the Jeep. Yeah, he's got... Wow, his squads aren't even that high. What is he using his manpower on? He built a... Oh, he's got a supply... Observation post. Observation post. That must be it, because I just noticed that his squads are at, like, half health. What is this one? Is that five of six? Yeah. Oh, but he's coming Man, to he... flank behind the MG. Not bad. Yeah, but he's lost... Rifleman is far too little health. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the things about using non-conventional strategies is they seem to always revolve around quick teching. Like, you know, you build lots of pioneers, you want to just basically get to tier 3 as quickly as possible. Or you go weapon support center, you just try to hold your ground until you can quick tech. Um, a lot of um, thinking... Uh, my infantry company... Uh, well, not mine, but kind of something me and Sefa were playing around with back in October, like the rifle ranger spam. That one was kind of the reverse of, of what, what I'm kind of suggesting, but I just noticed a lot of these odd strategies uh, revolve around teching up quick. 
Um, so now we have MP40s on the uh, on the Volks. Oh and, no, uh, they got Jeep damaged got engine. Damage engine. Yeah, Good that's night. Toast. So what do you think uh, Kodachrome should be should be doing right now, uh, Annie? Do you think uh, motor pool is the best way to go, or uh, should he be trying to just maybe get you know bars or grenades or something like that? Oh. Painful. Yeah, I don't think bars or grenades will be any good right now because he has like one or two riflemen squad at most. Ooh, right. That's a good option. <laughs> it's too bad he lost that jeep. I would have really looked forward to uh, the double jeep uh, raid. Yeah. That could have definitely put a lot of damage out of the economy back here as far as the resources income. He's uh, actually looks like when he had his jeeps over here, he was able to decap the strap point on the right. And that has yet to have been recapped. So now he's is... Uh, actually, that wouldn't have mattered, I guess, because he's still got all the <laughs> stuff on the right, so... No reason yep. to cap that. Never mind. I'm just being stupid. I'm an idiot. Okay, but I do I do believe we have tier three. Probably going to be building a, a Sturm Armory. Um, last game, Kodachrome also went right side of of armor um, as opposed to the to the norm. And I be, I mean now you you see Volks using you know their wire ability, which was something you know that just came a patch or two ago. And I've been noticing people building sandbags a lot more with them and and uh, barb, barbed wire, and it just seems... Uh, what was your take on that uh, change, Andy? Do you think it was completely necessary or maybe a little bit imbalanced? Mm, at this moment? Mm, I mean, Ooh. the last patch was like... Ouch. Nice mine placement. Indeed. But he actually should have placed two mines in a row, then all of them would be dead. If, see this bug, by the way. <laughs> when the engine gets, like, white, it starts to move faster actually it's kind of weird really as opposed Engine's to yellow or white? red yeah no if you click on the unit there's a white engine instead of a yellow engine yeah there's like a bug that was like uh, in there a lot oh. of times actually look and now the engine damage is gone when it got like Panzer Fausted. you know I wow. was thinking no I think it's because it's been repaired I think he's going for it was gonna go for a demo rush but uh, that that's shame on Kodachrome. I mean, that's like the oldest trick in the Samoa handbook is to place a mine right there. Um, so shame shame on him for running over that. But uh, it worked we'll out. I mean, how did he kill that machine gun? With it? was it continually shooting at the at the half track? Not sh not because sure. I know it wasn't shooting that, at those riflemen. They didn't seem pinned yeah. or, or suppressed at all, and I didn't notice he went it until for, I saw it for die. demo charges. Oh man, it's too bad he didn't run, rush him in his base. But I think at this point he kind of he kind of knows it's not in his best ah. interest. So we have uh, he's demoing the church, which probably will not take it down, and he's demoing the small building, which probably will take it down. It still uh, does damage running... to the units inside it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think he just he set it there so that if if he ever goes back in there, he can just blow right, it. Right, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, like, a, he's a real unconventional player. He's straight up, uh, like I said, my kind of guy. And uh, you can see just his play style in these two replays is just uh, really unconventional. Um, yeah, I've never seen people use demolition charges in, like, a main 1v1 outside of a demo rush. Yeah, there's a new strategy that's kind of come up. I think uh, Challenger Lee and Savvy Kin. Uh, I hope to get a, a replay of Savvy in, uh, either next week or sometime soon. But... Uh, Anyways, it, you know, it's basically like quick demo charges with uh, airborne and satchels, and it works best on Angaville. Um, also, engineers can just sneak right through the uh, the bunkers on Angaville and uh, take out that Vermont quarters. So, there's some some interesting strategies coming out with demo charges. Um, so, what do you think? What do you make of all this, Annie? I gave my take, and I think uh, Bridger gave a little bit of his his thoughts. What do you think? Uh, on the Volks or the demo charges? Just the demo charges, just in general, his play style, etc. <clears throat> oh, I see. Um, now, <laughs> maybe something about the balance. I, I think demo charges are a bit um, too expensive, actually. Like 50 uh, munitions, and they yeah. mostly don't really take down anything special or anything. Anyway. Well, we'll see yeah. how useful they are when uh, when they. When somebody, when something goes in one of those buildings, we'll see if they yeah. uh, do a lot of damage to it. Uh oh, uh oh, storm squad. Oh wow, that would have been completely in big trouble if that second one had hit. Rear armor, yeah. rear armor, but he gets out without major I, damage. Doesn't look like engine. he has armor skirts on that. Did I miss the upgrade? 
I no, don't I guess think no. he has it. That's correct. Yeah, he's so. he's been using all his munitions on uh, on demo charges, so I don't think he has enough. He's got 75 right now, which is only a just got track going into the base. Yep, with a couple of engineers inside of it. Here we go. He's gonna try and demo <laughs> that Sturm. I think that could actually set yep. his opponent down quite a bit. I think he should just take out the Wehrmacht and get the hell out of there. I don't know if it still does this, but a long time ago they kind of nerfed demo charges. They don't uh, take out a Sturm anymore with one. Uh, ah, well, I wonder why he, he's not. At, oh, he doesn't have enough resources to demo the Wehrmacht too. And he's not even sending anything back. He's not even trying. Does he notice? Maybe he doesn't notice. That M8's about to get owned. Where's the M8 at? Aha! Uh -huh. uh, yep, I see it. Oh, he, I don't know. It's, hands are fast, he's got, too. He's got demo charges on just about everything. It looks like I can't see it, but I know you can see it. Yeah, I can see he's got it on the church, the building to the left of the church, the building north of the center, and now he's put <laughs> one on the Wehrmacht. He just noticed. Oh my god, he just noticed. There's a problem. I've got demo charges on two of my buildings. <laughs> I can't believe it. The armored car is still alive because it hasn't been able... No, there's been no critical hit. There it goes. Was that a Panzerfaust or did it just die? I didn't see it. Couldn't tell. Yeah, I think it just died. <clears throat> and now yeah, he's going to put mean... another demo charge. He's going to put his guys behind the HQ hopefully to demo that. Is he waiting to maybe detonate that Sturm as soon as a Puma comes out? Ah, I guess not. I thought that would be really cool. Yeah, I thought that, that was what he was doing. He might be. He might have been a little preoccupied, but uh, I don't know why he just doesn't blow up uh, some of these buildings. I mean, he laced. There's still demo charges, right? I mean, on the church or did he? Are, yeah, on a yes, lot of these there buildings. Is. But we actually get like. Uh, <clears throat> has anything gone in the bridge? Are you still yet? able to see like what the uh, demo charges sees or not? I can see the demo charges. You're on the axis side. I don't think you can see them. Yeah, I know, but um, can you actually see what the demo charges are seeing in a focal war? You can see what the demo charges are seeing. How big of a radius is that? Is it like? Uh, is it like? He's asking. Can you can see you on see the Sturm them. Armory? Can you see the Wehrmacht quarters? Oh or? yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. It's it's a radius that's about as big as if you had a cap point. Like, uh, actually, yeah, it's about <laughs> it's about as big as a cap point. That's interesting, actually. But the I mean, church he, he the church went off. What happened? Did he get anybody with it? I didn't see it. I didn't see anything either. Nuts. I could see that the church got blown up a little bit. Maybe the AT gun shot the charge or something. Uh, that's what I think. Can it can it detonate it? I don't know. I think so, it looks like it. We, we're like, we're supposed to be experts on this game. How does this work again? Because we've never, I've never seen demo charges used. They're just so expensive in munitions. But I guess this is a very interesting strategy. Yeah, it seems to be <clears throat> would work best on Samoa due to uh, the fact that you have such a good comeback mechanic with uh, the fuel being right ba by yeah. your base. And uh, you tend to be able to hold on to at least one high ammunition. Um, but in this case, he's, he's not not able to. Um, I, I don't know if right now he's just kind of staving off an eventual death or, or if he can pull it around, but uh, what do you think, Annie? He's pulling out an M10 right now. He's got two Pumas to go up against, so with an M10 and a quad, he doesn't have a quad, that's right. He has just a half-track. With an M10 and a half-track backing up some riflemen, he might have a chance of getting out again. Uh, and if he can surprise him by uh, trying to get him to put something in that building and then blow it, that would be cool too. Yep. But wow, the entire map is now in Crusher of All's possession, except for obviously the uh, Allied side. Here comes the M10. How many rifle squads do we have? Looks like. Wait, one. none? There's only one. Wow, those were engineer squads um. before. Ouch, she's really hurting here. We'll see what they can do. There's definitely a storm squad hanging around up here somewhere with two Shreks. Two storm squads. Is there two Shreks each? No, one of them only has one Shrek. So that M10 is still going to be in big trouble if he lets itself be seen. He's got a lot of uh, AT presence, but he doesn't have a whole lot of anti-infantry presence. He lost his M8, and he never got the upgrade for it either. Now, where's he going with his M10? 
Uh, he doesn't want to walk into the storms. I guess but, not. Uh, I, I just can't believe he hasn't detonated some of the uh, the demo charges. I mean, he's getting line of sight from them. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I don't understand why he hasn't detonated the the, the Wehrmacht. Wehrmacht at least. Yeah. Maybe he was waiting for something to pop out, which never did pop out. But uh... hey, he did it. He wait. <laughs> he was waiting for some pioneers. Went near that, and he just obliterated it. Oh, now he's gonna go own the Sturm Armory. Aha! Uh -huh, like, like that's I what said, he's doing. They nerfed it because before it didn't used to uh, didn't used to take it. It used to take it all the way down. And there's that pathing, fabulous pathing that Axis has to deal with, or, or anyone has to deal with if they spawn in the north. You have to extra micro. Yeah! Wow! It barely survived, and now all he has to do is hit it like once. It was a weird false one. Here come the storms, but it's not going to be in time. Wow. And he's got to get out of there. Come on, time to move. You're going to lose it in one shot. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, okay. no, he did it. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. You just, you should not be able to just sit there and turn and kill things. <laughs> no. Just Man, that flaming is no. The is over. <laughs> <sighs> More st Ah! What the hell? He's backing into them! He's not even <laughs> driving forward! Urgh. Somebody stop this guy! Two against infantry, my ass! <laughs> good, good times. Good times. He actually made some, kind of a comeback. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, he's oh got God. a couple of AT going guns. The bear wow, he didn't notice the AT gun's been able to see those Pumas. He moved it up a little bit, or he built a new one. Oh, yep. that's why. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, oh my God. God! Oh my God! Oh. What? <laughs> what? What am I missing? He just he just demoed like and blew up like a squad and a half of uh, <laughs> the Vermont quarters. They were too close to it. He was watching that. Yep. I see. Now he's got double vet, but he's not gonna make it. Not gonna make it, no way. There it goes. No. He lost it. I, I guess that was probably that. worth it. No. I missed uh, that one. That was rich. And uh, here goes oh. the Calliope. Oh, man. I think hitting the retreat button did him more harm than good here. He ran right into the path, but yeah, there you go. That that was a lot of damage in that Calliope. He's actually making a combo. That's wow, there's crazy. a quad now. Yeah, but he has no counter for Puma, so uh, sure he does. He's no, got two AT guys in, in, in the in the field counter. I mean, it's he's gonna be moving hard right for... now. Yeah, that's true. If he move, if he knows that if he's moving his Puma correctly, if he can get him to move that Puma next to the demo charge comes. around there the other comes. side, uh, missed. Uh, is he gonna move it close enough to the demo charge? Here it comes. Ah, not quite. I guess he decided not to blow it. It would have been funny if he went right around the side of that building and got blown up by the demo charge. Yeah, I'm going to have to get Coda on the show and pick his brain about some of these lovely strategies that he's come up with recently. <laughs> I'm enjoying yeah. them. We haven't even been looking. at the, the victory points have been going back and forth all the game. Now we see uh, what looks to be Axis in charge of two very soon, and so the allies are going to start draining again. What is he shooting? Wait, wait, He's did you trying to that... blow up the hedge? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So I wonder if he's going to get a Sherman. I'd say a Sherman's probably his best bet at this point. Is he making a Sherman? No, a crocodile, surprisingly. Well, uh, that, that flows with what he did last game. Oh, man. Right by the storms. Wow, oh man, I didn't even see. Half track medic. Oh, a lucky miss. Oh, yeah, definitely a lucky miss. If any of those had been uh, engine damage, you would have been in trouble. I... But this is interesting. He's like, I've got enough vehicles. I don't need anything else. I've got a Stug. I've got a Puma. <laughs> I'll just build a Comcraft Center and make everything I have really good. <laughs> He's like, I'll just call in Tigers later. I mean, uh, that's, that's one of the things that people, I think the reason that Blitz is so popular is you don't need base buildings. Yep. The comeback mechanic, and now yeah. we have a second Calliope. This is pretty reminiscent of the uh, last game that we had. Yeah. And man, those AT guns are in deep trouble. Uh oh. They're about to get completely annihilated. Yeah. But 
If he reveals them, that croc is gonna pop out. It's already popped out there, but it's got a stug to deal with. Uh oh, stug's getting taken rear armor. He's just blocking it. Yeah. There it is. There's the double. There's the double. Oh, good night, Susan. Oh. And it obliterated it with Panzer Shreks too. Awesome. Holy crap, that was cool. That was like cooler than cool. Why is he down there with the croc? Oh, after those storms, he doesn't notice. Oh, it no. got stuck on some pump that just came out of the ground for whatever reason. That would be you know, uh, balance. That's... The croc <laughs> god is watching down and saying, Ah, I will pull up the dirt. Or no, not no, the axis. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, that croc's toast. Oh, well. I don't Looks know, like fire does spontaneous damage sometimes, you know, this stug might just spontaneously explode. And by that I mean it won't happen, but that's okay. So, definitely a crazy comeback here by Kodachrome. Making his way back onto the field, he's got access to the fuel again on the left there. How close is he to, uh, to a Pershing? Because at this point, I mean... Crusher He's only got one double CP. Glide, barrage. Yeah, I see that. Is he going all oh, the way for the God. base? Wow. Oh my God. It's not going to be that effective because it's long range, but it is double, so it's going to do some decent damage. But he's only got one CP right now. He hasn't done a lot of damage, I, I guess. A lot of X. He hasn't got a lot of XP since he called in the Calliope, or he's gone down the other tree. So that's right. That would be yeah, uh, he, what is he it? Went down Fast right deployment. Side, so. so he's got he's one six CP. Six points away. Uh, yes. No, five points, because I, I assume he's already spent one point on fast deployment. Oh, okay. Alright, well, I don't know if he can hold off for that long, but, uh... uh every last game, I mean, it's just so confusing to watch this. It's like, you can't, you know, it's like, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Oh, it looks like the M10's again. gonna win this battle. Yeah, what the <laughs> hell? The Stug is still alive, and it's still fighting. That M10's toast, I think. Yeah, there goes the nice block with the Puma. Speed my ass. Puma says goodnight. Unless it gets hit by accident when something should. Main gun destroyed. Oh, he's trying. Oh, no, I can't believe he's going to get away. I thought that Panzerfaust was going to be able to Panzerfaust for off. the win. He already used it. He's on a cooldown, but he did get it. Uh, did the Puma just kill that? No. I don't think I so. I swear, I just saw it was like a rear shot that the Stug missed and the Puma just shot it in, in the rear. Might have yeah, been. Yeah, it was the Puma. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow, he almost got that Comcraft Center, too. How, yeah. how low is the health on that? Uh, like an eighth. Wow. It looks like it's falling apart for sure. Well, he just spent the one point. No, he's he's got crew vehicle repairs now, so he's about, what is it, It's uh, four away now? Ooh. There's your uh, single Calliope barrage. Killed well, a bunch a of those. It was a double. Oh, it was a double. Right side, but there was nothing there. So, and here comes God. It's another M10. I don't know. How close are we to a Tiger? He's he can call it right now. Oh, you're kidding me! Oh, that is un freaking believable, unacceptable. Allied war An machine. Allied war for machine. The win. Crushing of it. That, that, I hate that freaking feature bug mechanic, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know. I just, it's so weird that the M10 is the only one that has a lot of success with that. I guess it's because it's fast. I don't know. We I got a Calliope like on the other side trying to run him over. Oh my god, how long is the timer on the thing? 45 <laughs> seconds. 45 seconds. And it got out of control. Will it go off? Remember last time? Yeah, yeah not quite. Yeah. We saw it go off. Yeah, last time he activated it right when uh, right when the thing was in the out of control. Yeah, that's what it was. And then we saw, it, didn't another one? It went off just before it went out of control, something like that. Yep. Oh, what the hell is the Calliope doing? Which one? I think he's probably just trying to get a real close barrage. That certainly would be useful. What can he see? Does he know that's there? Um, so he's got his M10 yeah. back. Still, tickets are slowly tricking down. Axis is a uh, superior position right now. We're about three points away from a Pershing. What do we got for a Tiger? I'm sorry, um, yeah, three points. No, he just got, uh, this Tiger on the field. Oh, That's right. probably gonna turn this game around. Oh, yeah. 
Calliope's just sitting there. Not a good thing. You gotta move it. I don't think he notices. There He's comes a Calliope barrage. Barraging the right, or the left rather, the north. That was a little bit too far, but it still did some damage. Now he's moving Another M10. I don't know, this is still kind of anyone's game. I mean, uh, Crusher Vols really split up his forces. Arrgh! <laughs> <sighs> that is... More, more, I hope uh, people at Relic are watching, because that is just... an unbalanced situation. Especially when the M10's weakness is supposed to be killing infantry, but it can kill infantry far superior when you have certain conditions, like, you know, infantry just pinned up against something, like a building. Another Calliope barrage right here. It was against the tiger on the right side, but it missed. Where did the tiger go? Oh, it went to the north. He couldn't well, see it. He was just shooting into the fog of war then. He got the M10, but, uh, I'm sorry, he got the Stug, but he's gonna lose the M10. It's a damn it, destroyed engine. Yeah. Now we still got a couple of, uh, demo charges that could be used potentially in the future. Yep. <sighs> and we've got storms replays. back to full strength. <laughs> and here comes the uh, triple cap, and uh, I don't think he has enough to turn it around. Yeah, I don't think he does either, but he's going to try, I bet. Two AT guns, if uh, he can get Three AT shots. guns. Three AT guns. Uh, I think he's a little too paranoid uh, at this point. Of, uh, if he can get that tiger to waltz into three AT guns line of sight and hit armor piercing on all three of them, I will be happy. Well, it's just he's getting level one veterans here on his infantry right now. Um, he's got level two. Here comes the uh, Calliope barrage on the VP. If it stops the counter, he's got a chance. Nope. Nope. Not quite. I guess he's just he's trying to get both of those squads, or was there one taking the? fuel as well. He's the one taking the fuel. Just killed that and the other uh, I don't know, Anna, you think these Calliopes are paying for their manpower cost? You think going right side armor is a, is a good idea? At uh, this moment, nope. <laughs> so uh, what is he doing he, he, over he, here? He, he knows he's got nothing. Uh, he's got another M10, but I mean he's got nothing to support these AT guns. That's a dangerous position. He sees the yeah, tiger, really. right? He can see the tiger now. I'm, I'm on his fog of war. He can see it. And he's shooting out the hedge. There goes a barrage. Did a little I mean, bit of damage learn, there. He, he hit his own how to barrage. I mean, he's barraging like really use, useless targets like tiger. Barrage doesn't do anything against the tiger. Wow. AT yeah. guns hitting that tiger hard. He backed it out, though. It's going to be okay. MP44 is on the... Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's good night right there. Now he's gonna have to roll in for the. Oh, he's gonna try and squish him, but I don't think he's gonna get close enough. Nope. My his micro failed. Him yeah, his AT moment. guns are in the way. Damaged engine. Yeah. Main gun destroyed. Out of control. Hey, look, there wasn't a five percent bug. Hallelujah. So yeah, I think that's it right here. That was certainly. A good try. He's just trying to kill that tiger. Just let me get the tiger. I'll get so much XP, it'll be worth it. He's got Which both game? his calliopes here. When, as soon as those storms revealed themselves, he should have had those calliopes ready and close to support the ATs to bl blow them to pieces. That's what that's what calliopes are really good at. If you get that close shot, you can wipe out infantry squads very easily, especially with two calliopes. I I just even in the last game, I haven't seen him using the calliopes in a in a really efficient manner. What do you think about, uh, well, me personally, I like this game a little bit better than the last one. It's just a little bit weirder with the double chargers. But, uh... And, and the double yeah, jeep. I don't know. For that matter. And the what? The double jeep. Double jeep opening, yeah. But it's just interesting that around the same time, this, uh, this, the, uh, right side of armor strategy, I don't even know if this is a fair analysis, but... It kind of kind of seems like once the tigers roll out on the field, that uh, you're going to start having serious problems. I think that's more uh, of a problem with the tiger and Pershing balance. Yeah. So, what do you think of this strategy, Eddie? He's been very low on general... capping power. I think that's another detriment to the strategy. Yeah, and just your general take on the game. 
um, he should actually learn how to use those calliope barrages. I mean, he wasted a lot of them. I mean, they could have been like a really game turners, but that's uh, really what's missing in the strategy. I mean, he did quite good, like uh, saddle charges and stuff like that. Yeah, of course he doesn't have like the uh, good capping power, but still. And he really misses the uh, the, the Pershing against the Tiger. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he's driving over the troops again. There we go. One C one VP. There it is. I mean, I've always said that the Calliope is very powerful and it's very useful, especially even if you only have one. Um, as long as you are using it at the shortest range that it has, because then it's got a very tight, tight radius of damage and so it does a lot of damage to whatever's in there but if you use it at long range he did a lot better this game he he was pretty close a lot of the time but i don't think he used it at the opportune moments and i think you know last game we saw he was using it at huge long distances halfway across angaville and it was just completely ineffective because of that yeah i agree um back in the day you know 1.2 1.3 before they really kind of change the Calliope around um, it's in beta as well like you used to it used to cost munitions so you really had to line up your shot and because it was 125 munitions and also the Calliope because it had you know a main gun it would always be kind of close to the to the combat close to the action um, whereas now that it's kind of free you tend to feel like maybe it's more disposable and uh, so I think he's just trying to use his barrages as much as possible. The one thing I, I think he does know how to do is keep those, you know, like with perfection. Uh, is he knows how to keep those calliopes alive. I mean, that last game, it was around the entire game. This game, is it, it, these calliopes were around the entire game. And yep. you, you don't always see that. Um, so, um, but uh, as, as far as these strategies, I mean, they don't always work, but... You know, especially against a, another great player, but uh, who knows? I mean, they're fun to watch, and I'm sure he had a hell of a good time executing it. So, uh, kudos to uh, Kodachrome, and I, I almost feel bad for Crusher of all that he had to he had to put up with some of these <laughs> weird ass yeah. things that are coming out of left field. So, uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, do you have any anything to add to to what we were just talking about, Annie? <laughs> yeah, definitely those uh, saddle charges. Damn, they blew up. You mean the demo charges? Yeah, exactly. Oh man, they blew up so many stormtroopers and those overpowered M10s. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's just OP. <laughs> Sherman, who needs a Sherman? Oh man, that was ridiculous. Who needs a Sherman, exactly. Yeah, it was a good game overall. Um, I, I like, that's just my favorite type of replay to watch just the kind of weird crazy stuff that you don't see in every game i mean who wants to watch another armor versus left side of blitz you know game uh, sorry left side of armor versus left side of blitz game i still got to come up with some strategy with a quick manpower blitz on the right side with a right side of blitz strap but uh maybe i'll pass that one on to coda i'll give him the challenge see if he can let me let me i, I got with. two words for you gren spam yeah, well, that was the original idea. Was all right, all right. I got two words for you. Pioneer spam. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. no. Oh, it's coming to me. A thousand manpower could buy you something like, what, seven bikes? Come on! Yes! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Back in the, in the old days, that would have been crazy. What were you going to say? Maybe I was thinking you can actually combine it. Maybe you can try to get, like, Stormtrooper spam with, uh, with that shit. But it would still be five points in, so it would come later. If you went storms first, you mean, and then just rather than getting the studs, your next three points switched over. You really have to kind of win it in the middle game, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, two Kriegs, manpower blitz. I'm waiting for it. Double this, double your pleasure, double the. Sun. Wow, something I didn't even realize. Did you see how close he was to stopping that timer at the bottom point? No, I missed it. I know he was raiding but, in the in the in the north. Uh, yeah, with, uh, well, there was that, but he also he had two. He had an engineer squad down there. Uh, that's at like ninety eight percent to capping the south the south point, which would have stopped the the timer. 
Oh, uh, uh, sometimes it happens like that. I was playing against someone on... Uh, Not that he would have been able to come back, but... <laughs> I was playing against someone on Samoa, and he it was like the strafing run of ages. It took out... There was like two Volk squads, and the Pioneer was capping the fuel on the right side of Samoa in the middle, and the, one of the Volk squads was was capping the uh, the VP, and I mean, it, say, it won me the game, and then the other Volk squad was right next to it. I did a strafing run, I took out both Volk squads and the Pioneers, just like perfect strafing run, and uh, I, I got that on Fraps. I don't know, we should try to figure out a way to upload it. It's strafing run of ages. It was wonderful. <laughs> Just reminded me of uh, those last second. I mean, it was literally right when he was about to cap it. The strafing run came in. So, you know, who would have, who would have, uh, who knows how that would have turned out if he could have turned around the VP. But I still don't think there was any way he could come back from having two tigers, pumas, storms, and all that stuff on the field with what he had. Yep. All right. So that's the end of yet another excellent Tales of Heroes video replay review. Tune in next week. By the way, remember. We're looking for matches on Rails and Metal. So if you've got a great Rails and Metal match, go ahead and send it into Tales of at GameFire.com. Tales of at GameFire.com. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you to Vittensby. Thank you to Aniketos for coming on and helping us out here. We really appreciate it. Send us any feedback as well to Tales of at GameFire.com. And send us any topics that you want us to discuss on the audio show. Sure. 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 Really Geek Show, Billy Bake. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Have a good night.